Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with the Mac Mini, the new M41, because a lot of folks in my original review were curious about how the Mac Mini might stack up as a Plex server. After all, there is a native version of the Plex server for Apple Silicon-based devices, which this one, of course, is powered by. And a lot of you are wondering how well it might perform. So we're going to find out today, running a couple of different video scenarios. And what we'll do is compare in real time how those videos transcode on the Mac versus a super cheap GMK Tech N100 based mini PC. We last featured this in my Linux server on the cheap video where you can see just how effective this really low cost computer can be at hardware transcoding. In fact, it was even doing HDR to SDR tone mapping off of a 4K video in real time with plenty of room to spare insofar as what its processor was handling. So I was very impressed with this and we'll see how the Mac holds up here doing the same tasks on both. And to do this, we're going to play back a couple of different videos. One is a regular Blu-ray rip, a 1080p Blu-ray. We're also going to look at a 4K Blu-ray and doing hardware uh, tone mapping again along with transcoding and we'll also look at an AV1 file because a few people were interested in that as well and in all of these instances we're going to have the two computers playing back the video transcoding it down to 720p so we'll put both of these things here through a bit of a workout so I'm eager to see how they stack up against each other and before we jump into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is not a paid sponsorship by Plex, although they do occasionally sponsor videos here on the channel. I will, though, leave an affiliate link in the video description for a Plex Pass, which is what you need to do hardware transcoding on these devices. I also want to add that the GMK Tech PC here was sent to the channel free of charge by GMK Tech. However, they are not sponsoring this video either, and I bought the Mac here with my own funds. No one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how these two devices stack up when it comes to Plex hardware transcoding. All right, so we're going to start off here with a Blu-ray MKV file. Both of these machines are playing the same exact Blu-ray rip, and as you can see, both are currently hardware transcoding down to 720p at four megabits per second. And if we stack up the two charts here, you can see that both are very efficient in that activity. What I'm gonna do here is actually just jump both of these machines that's playing back to the midpoint here and see what that does to our server usage. Both of them I can see here on the desk have started playing back immediately. You can see both have a little bit of a spike in uh, performance here, but they are going to both settle down here as the chart continues moving through here. So overall, it looks like the Mac might do a little bit better perhaps when it's first spinning up, but it looks like both of these have a ton of capacity if you're just doing basic 1080p to 720p live transcoding. And you can see here that, again, we got the HW next to both of these servers here as we're monitoring. By the way, the app that I'm running here is called Plex Dash. And this is a really helpful way to keep an eye on all of your servers here in real time. So not bad here. Uh, for the first test, both are seemingly uh, equal in that regard. So why don't we step things up a little bit and move on to the AV1 file. All right, so here we've got the 1080p AV1 file running here. And we are transcoding once again to 720p H.264 at four megabits per second. You can see both systems here are doing this in hardware and both are delivering about the same consumption on the CPU. The Mac arguably is a little bit higher, hovering a little closer to 20%, but both of them here seem to be performing about the same, doing the same task. The new M4 does apparently add AV1 to its video encoders and decoders on chip. I don't think that was the case with the prior versions of the Apple Silicon. So that might be why we're seeing a little better performance here. Plex does rely on Apple's libraries for media encoding. So it looks like those uh, new codecs that it supports just carry over almost automatically here, uh, given the fact that they're relying on Apple APIs. So, so far, so good. But let's take a look now at doing some hardware transcoding of a 4K Blu-ray file that has HDR that we need to convert down to SDR. Let's see if they can be comparable with that. All right, so we've got the same file here playing back on both systems at pretty much the same spot in the movie. 
What I noticed with both of them is that there's an initial spike of activity and then it drops down as it gets caught up. So I think it tries to transcode a little bit ahead of the viewer and then it just works to keep up. So as you can see, both systems here are beginning to level off. The PC, the GMK Tech machine running Linux here, uh, does seem to not require as much usage to get to that point, whereas the Mac does use a little bit more. I should also add that on the Mac, the pink line is what the Plex server is consuming for transcoding. There's nothing else running on the Mac right now, and it looks like there's a separate Mac application that kind of spins up to do the transcoding, which is why the Plex media server green line there is not moving along with the red one. All right, so now I wanna see how well it can play multiple 4K transcodes of a tone mapping uh, type of activity here. And what we've got now is the Mac Mini playing back to two different places along with the Mini PC. Again, we are doing our four megabit per second 720p transcode, and both here are holding their own. They are pretty much performing about the same here. So you've got a little room on both of these devices. The Mac might be working a little bit harder, uh, but by and large, the uh, cheap mini PC here and the more expensive Mac mini seem to be very comparable in their performance. And again, using hardware transcoders to do all of this work pretty much in real time, which is pretty impressive to see. Now, as far as memory usage is concerned on the Mac right now, we're using about 1.3 gigabytes of RAM to do those two transcodes. You can see there's two instances of the Plex transcoder along with two instances of this decoder service here that is doing the work currently. But Linux is much more efficient from a memory standpoint. So we're consuming right now about 320 megabytes of RAM for both transcoding sessions right now on the Linux box. That is a lot less than we're seeing on the Mac. So the Mac will probably run out of RAM uh, before it runs out of processing capacity, but you can scale a lot better on Linux. Even with this little mini PC, we could get a lot more users going at once here, given how much little memory overhead there is for the Plex transcoder. But as a personal Plex server, the Mac is going to be just fine, especially if you're using it in the home and not doing much transcoding at all. You'll barely see that impact your overall footprint. So the Mac is a viable Plex serving solution, I think for individuals and maybe a friend or two, but Linux is more efficient in the end. And if you were looking to have something dedicated to Plex serving in the house, I don't think the Mac is probably the way to go. I would stick to something running Linux and Docker and you've got a very affordable and very upgradable and much more efficient Plex serving solution. But again, if you were looking to just have it running along with a few other things on your Mac and also using it as a desktop, you'll be fine here with this. And of course the power consumption as we saw in the original video is quite good on the Mac. So hopefully this helps answer the question about running a Plex server on the Mac. It does seem to work okay, but it does work better on the Linux side. Let me know what you thought down in the comment section. If you want more on this topic, I am happy to explore further. So keep those questions coming. It does help give me some ideas for future content. Until next time, this is Lon Seiben. Thanks for watching.